What's going on to my Euphoria fans out there and happy Euphoria Sunday. Elliot back again here from Movie Files breaking down episode 3 of season 2 of Euphoria which was titled Ruminations Big and Little Bullies. I'm going to tell you all right now. There was some stuff that I absolutely loved about this episode. I think it's the funniest episode of Euphoria so far. And then there's a chunk, about 15 minutes of this episode, that I just wasn't vibing with. We're going to break it all down here in this spoiler review. But before we dive into it, make sure you're checking me out on all my other social media accounts. If you're new to the channel, we are on the quest to 20,000 subscribers. So if you want to be a part of the community, make sure you're subscribed and you're hitting that notification bell. And as you can see on the screen now, if you enjoyed this spoiler discussion, well, make sure to like this review, share the review. But more importantly, once you've seen episode 3 of season 2 of Euphoria, I want to know your thoughts in the comments. Let's talk Rue. Is she going to be like Smokey from Friday and smoke all the drugs that Lori gave her and will end up being kidnapped? Or will she team up with Elliot and they're going to sell the drugs to maybe all of the recovering addicts in AA? And let's talk about Cal and Fez. And what do you all think about Cal in that opening? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Let's talk about it all and everything in between in the comments below. So just a quick reminder, if you all do not know, but every single Sunday after the episode premieres at 9.15 p.m. Central Time, myself and an incredible guest that I'd like to bring on. we got two special guests I'm excited to share with you all this Sunday. So I hope you all can tune in. It's a live discussion, discussing everything about the episode. So I'm going to leave the link in the description so you all can join the discussion. So that will be tonight. See you soon. But let's get into my thoughts about this episode. Just starting off with my initial thoughts. Like I said, there's some stuff that I loved about this episode. Like once we got past, I would say... That 15, 17 minute mark when Rue and Gia, they have their fight and then everything else from that point on was either hilarious or emotionally satisfying or just great storytelling. But prior to that, I'm not going to lie, guys. I'm, I saw the trailer last week. I'm like, okay, we got Cal. We're going to learn where Cal comes from. It's going to either humanize him and we're going to get a better understanding of the character or it's going to make me hate him anymore. It didn't do any one of those things. It did not work for me at all. I'm going to get into my reasons why, but I did not like the opening of this show. I thought it was kind of pointless, but I do have some things that I, I might want to theorize of what it could have meant. But overall, the cow stuff wasn't for me. But everything else was fantastic. But that's just my initial thoughts. So let me know your pros and cons in the comments below. But let's break it all down as we open up with young Cal. And I believe I want to say what late 80s, early 90s is the time frame that we're in with him in high school. We meet his best friend, Derek. Uh, and, and we see that they have a very close relationship. At first, it came off very like one sided, almost kind of like the Rue and Jules relationship. But later on, we find out that it's definitely a two way street between those two friends. But we meet young uh, Masha and we see that, you know, she she was the one that Cal lost his virginity to. We get a brief scene of Cal's dad, and also I, I, I think he has a younger sister, which I don't know if we'll meet her in the future. But we didn't. I, I think okay, the dad. He was. I'm thinking that we're gonna get so much of Cal in this episode. Like his dad was maybe a closeted gay man, and he ended up getting outed, and he had to separate himself from the family. And maybe that's why Cal kept his you know sexuality a secret. We didn't get any of that. And, and again, I, we'll, we'll get to my thoughts about this cow opening, but I, I was just like, that would have been interesting, kind of explore that relationship. But we do get something uh, interesting here in regards to we get to see that that relationship I was referring to was a two way street between Cal and Derek after graduation. It's, you know, a, a romantic, you know, moment that's happening here. The rain's coming down. We see Derek takes Cal to uh, what I assume was a gay bar, which they can be themselves. And they're dancing and they're getting closer and they, you know, they kiss on the dance floor. Now, I don't know if they went further than that. They didn't show us any of that, like if they had sex that night but the next morning cow gets a call from his girlfriend it's revealed that she's pregnant and it's the son you know his first son i think his name is luke who we have on what only seen like two or three times in the show he was actually in tonight's episode but we see that you know she's pregnant and that's the end of cow so i'm like wow that felt kind of pointless so the only thing i can take away from the opening Number one, we see that Cal was, he's always been, you know, in, in, into men. He can be gay or bisexual. I think he's bi, but he obviously doesn't want to claim that because uh, he has so much pride and he's the man of town. So that's the one thing to take away. But also, when it comes to Derek, now I'm like, okay, what happened to Derek? He might come back into this season. I don't think he's going to be a big character, but it would be interesting if Derek ends up being one of the parents, being a dad of one of our main, well, not main characters, but maybe the dad of Elliot. We don't really know his, you know, family backstory, so that would be interesting. Or it's revealed 
that Cal is not the father of Luke, the older son, uh, you know, Nate's older brother, or it's revealed that Masha ended up having sex with him multiple times, and he's not only the dad of Luke, but he's also the dad of Nate. So that could be something to look forward to, but if none of that happens, I will be thinking about in this season, wow, the Cal stuff did nothing for me. So hey, we'll see what comes of this opening. I wasn't a fan of it at this point, but it might have a payoff a little bit later. But let me know what you all think about Cal in the opening and my theories on Derek maybe being a baby daddy of, uh, you know, Luke and Nate. I think his name is Luke. If I'm saying that wrong, let me know in the comments. But let's get back to the present timeline as we see. Rue is having a little bit of a dance number. She's high, enjoying life with her younger sister, Gia, who this is her first time that we've seen so far this year. I love uh, Stormy Reed, and and I hope we get a little bit more from her this season. But we see, you know, this is the first time all year first time this season where we got this multiple times in season one with Rue breaking the fourth wall and she's going into how she relapsed why she relapsed you know get into the mindset I love those scenes where we get into the mindset of Rue but we see that you know like I said at this point in the episode I'm like is this going to be the whole vibe? Like, I didn't like the opening, okay? The roof stuff was okay, but it wasn't really wowing me, but it wasn't until this exact moment. I have it on my notes here. I think it was about 17 minutes that it took me to finally kind of get invested in this episode. It's when Rue tells her younger sister, that she wants to start smoking weed and I, because of her anxiety. And we see that her younger sister, Gia, is like, you're selfish, Rue, and I don't want to even want to deal with you. And when they were pushing each other, yelling back and forth, I'm like, okay, this is the stuff I love about the Rue character. This is the stuff I love about the show when our characters kind of have that conflict and they go head to head and the truth start to come out. This is the this is the exact moment that I was like more invested in the story. And we see Rue, as drug addicts do, going into the reasons why she needs to get back on drugs and particularly she wants to smoke weed. She gaslights her sister by telling her that, you know, she needs to get high because it keeps her from taking her own life. And obviously, Gia is going to be there. She's a good sister. She's listening to the, you know, the words that a drug addict would say to get their way. And Rue promises that it's just going to be the weed. And we already know she broke that promise. So, again, this is the Rue that we love and hate. She has her moments when she's doing good. She's making right decisions. And then she does stuff like this where she lies to her sister. She lies to Jewel. She lies to her mom. And it's just this episode in particular. She's going down that path, and that Lori threat, I think, will come true a little bit later in the season. But we see, you know, she's telling everyone about her recent behavior due to the we. She's talking to Jules about Elliot, which brings us into one of my favorite scenes this episode, which is Jules interrogating Elliot to his about his sexuality, which is intentions with Rue. And, you know, we get, you know, he's like, okay, I'm answering your questions. How about you answer mine? How many men have you slept with? Which, by the way, like I said, I thought this was the funniest episode. When Rue was like, oh, she's a whore oh no I'm sorry not a whore she's a slut in that whole interaction there and those three Rue Elliot and Jules when they're on screen so far whether it was last week with that awkward interaction or this week they have such great chemistry and I love that Elliot is now into the mix and we'll we'll get to Elliot a little bit later when it comes to him and Jules's relationship moving forward but them three on, on screen together is like really good stuff but he just like fits right into their narrative and he brings up you know just a little bit contradiction uh Jules like you know you're a trans girl asking me about my sexuality and this that and the other I just again loving the conversations but at the end of the day he's passionate her tests so far but she still can't trust him quite yet but because we all know he is hiding something from her regarding that obviously Rue is back on drugs but I don't know if you all this is a small little nugget when Rue was going past Nate on their bikes he was listening to the same song he was listening to as a kid which again the opening didn't work for me I'm like oh that's a nice little easter egg you know we learned a little bit of his his song his playlist uh, that he likes to listen to uh, when he was a teen but let's get back to the real stuff we come to and, and just come to think about it like I said up top I think that the show is somewhat paralleling how Jules and Rue were friends and how they end up being a thing and how times have moved on that they can be themselves, right? I mean, there's still discrimination and hatred towards the LGBTQ community, but people can at least have that encouragement to be themselves versus when Kyle was obviously in high school, he couldn't tell anyone he was gay, right? So I think the show is somewhat trying to parallel those two stories. Again, I'm just trying to find more reasons of why this show opened with Kyle. But moving on, we see that, you know, we get Rue and Jules hooking up and I think was the back of her house, which we take it to Rue, going back to her secret stash that she got from Faye and she's still on heroin, which this is the worst drug she's taken so far, or at least that we've known of Rue and her journey of drugs. But 
But as we move on, and Lexi, who's just been fantastic this season so far, we see that she wants to start her own play because she looks her, her as herself as an observer. She's been observing everyone. She doesn't really speak up or speak out, but now that has changed because she will be writing her own movie, or in this case, the play, and the transition between when she was sitting at the table and going behind the scenes of her TV show and her being a supporting member, the lead of her own show, I thought that was such a great transition. But we get the life of Lexi Howard, which was one of my favorite parts of this episode, as she's talking about, you know, Grace and Holly's story, and that it's Grace's story, and, and it's, you know, aka Lexi's story. And I love the meta-ness of this moment here, the storytelling that we get in this moment, how she mentions that she's the supporting character, she's the sidekick, and they're overlooked. I didn't know if that was Sam Livingston, you know, the writer, creator, director, producer, editor of the show, kind of reading the comments, going on Reddit, how a lot of people feel like, and I know some people feel this way, that they feel Rue, you know, Zendaya, who plays the character so beautifully, but a lot of people feel like Rue is the least uninteresting character in her own story. Like, she's the lead of the show, but everyone else around her is the more interesting character. I think that's Sam Levinson saying, hey, I know that these other characters are pretty awesome, and I'm going to give you guys one of your favorite characters in Lexi, and she has been killing it so far. And I just, again, I love how meta that was in the moment. But cut to Alexi's sister, or should I call her Holly moving forward, but cut to Cass, who is up at 4 a.m. And she is uh, up to clear her head, but more importantly, she is, she got some things in her mind, and it's no other than Nate. We see that she is like major OCD over her look, and she is straight up a, a, a Patrick Bateman from American Psycho. She has a crazy ass routine that we see, and it was very unnerving for me just to see her scrubbing her face, and her, I'm like, ah, that kind of, that looks like that it's painful the things you know women will do for beauty or to get noticed in this case by Cass aka Holly and the more and more she's doing it the more and more she's becoming Maddie and when she became more like Maddie you know who noticed her in the hallway that is Nate and we get this brief moment where it's like it made her day but again I go back to this being the funniest episode of the season or of the series when Maddie noticed her she's like wait you look like it's like oh my class is the other like the comedic beats the comedic timing of all the actors in the show has been fantastic especially highlighted in this episode. This was the funniest episode, in my opinion. But let's cut back to Elliot. And I like the actor. I like this character so far. But let's be honest. He's not a good influence on Rue and Jules. As we see him, they're doing like a game of truth and tell or truth and dare. He dares Jules to pee in the street, which she does. He, you know, hits on this guy. And gets, you know, they chase him around a school. And, of course, we know his influence on Rue He's the reason, well, I don't want to say he's the, the reason, because she she can also me. she makes a decision for herself, she's, you know, she's her own person, but he's one of the reasons that she's going back down that path of drugs, so I like Elliot, but he's not a good influence on our characters so far, but going to my, my boy, Fez, catching up with him, and I love, hell no, <laughs> when he was talking to Rue in regards to the plan that she came up with, the giving him, giving her $5,000 up front uh, worth of drugs, and Fez, all season, you've been making some questionable decisions, whether it was, you know, obviously beat up Nate in front of everyone or letting Faye live in your house. But my man Fez made the right decision. Hell to the null when it comes to Rue and these drugs. But Rue, she goes behind her back and makes a deal of her own. But this is the first time when, when Cass goes in the ba bathroom and says, hey, Rue, Rue, I, I'm like thinking to myself, is that the first time they've ever spoken in this series? Now, I know from a probably a character standpoint, like a backstory, Rue, Lexi, best friends since they were kids, so obviously Rue and, and Cass know each other. They've probably spoken thousands of millions of times, but I don't think they've spoken in the show. I don't know. Let me know if I'm overthinking that, but either way, Rue, Rue, that, I love that name. I'm going to start calling Rue, 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 Rue now that moving forward, but we see Cass is dressed up like she's, all, and again, the comedic beats fantastic in this episode we see Cass is dressed like she's auditioning for Oklahoma had me dying laughing and her looking like a country pop star in delivery from Maddie when she's like <laughs> you better not be serious I'm telling you the jokes in this episode to me were just hitting on all cylinders but I love when you know Kat brings it up and Maddie and and and, and when Rue when she mentions that she's back on drugs and everyone seemed concerned as they should be right I'm like yeah Rue you got friends you got people that care for you but it's in this moment, that's the, the Oklahoma jokes and the country pop star looking jokes was the, the straw that broke the camel's back because we see that Cass admits her love to Nate, that she's never been happier, 
and you know I'm like damn and she's going into details you know I didn't betray our friendship you know you guys were broken up three weeks and three days to the exact point and she's going to this whole spell I'm like damn this is how it comes out this is when Maddie's gonna kill Cass but spoiler it didn't come out to be that way as the perfect Sam Levinson way it was all a dream it was all in her head she did not say that I'm like damn that would have been a perfect moment but it will be coming I hope sooner rather than later but cut to we got Selena playing the background which I love Selena but we go to Maddie who is confused she's talking to her you know little kid that she's babysitting Theo and obviously Cass is there as she says that you know this whole single life ain't really working for her she doesn't know what's worse being single or the worst moment she had with Nate and we see Cash trying to put that plant that seed like well listen Maddie you need to be find a, a person that appreciates you that cares for you that you deserve but she's talking to herself as Rue points out in the voiceover and we see that they have their Friday night routines that she has with Nate we see Kyle and Masha listening to them having sex upstairs and they're just like oh I, you know don't I miss high school days which again at this point Cal is he can't say anything because you know who has the power in the house that's Nate so we see him you know drinking beers in front of his dad because Cal he can't say nothing because his son has the control right now but let's check in with Kat who gets a little bit in this episode we see that she's on a date with Ethan and her parents and one of uh, Ethan's uh, mom asks her you know who are you you know tell us a little bit about yourself and we obviously know Kat right now is she doesn't know who she is she's very confused on who she is she doesn't know you know she doesn't have that much confidence in herself in regards to who she thinks that she is as a person and that's you know obviously to the continued storyline that we got with that character so far so again small little scene but a pivotal scene for that character and again i, I love exploring cat because she's one of my favorite characters in the show but his own life but Cal, he wasn't raised that way as we see that he's come up with a plan and he's spying on fezco and ashtray and Faye, which we're going to get to that scene in a second here but here comes Rue with her plan with meeting with Lori all dressed up brings up that Steve Jobs is her mentor and she wants to sell drugs for Lori I'm like Rue can, can someone help her please can, can Rue can, can you get some help but we see Lori fronts her she offers her 50k right up front but then Rue's like nah let's go a little bit lower you know at first I'm thinking she's gonna be smart and make the right decision not take the drugs but she's like nah let's just go lower where she ends up getting her ten thousand dollars she gets her a deadline Every single month, if you screw this up, Lori promised her, I'm going to get my money. I'm going to have some really bad, crazy people kidnap you to get my money. I think that that is foreshadowing if I've ever seen it before. We all know Rue is not going to meet those deadlines. So, um kidnapping is on the way but moving on rue is a drug dealer officially i think it was inevitable you know she's taking all the drugs in the world now she has to sell them but she's smoking her own supply like smoky from friday but back to cow who is you know got a loaded shotgun in his face by my boy ashtray as fez is questioning him and tells him that nate deserved that ass whooping which he did i thank you fezco for acknowledging that he deserved it and deserves many more coming uh but ashtray speaking of ass whoopings i'm telling you all Fez and my boy Ashtray are my heroes. You know, not only the naked his ass whooped, you know, two weeks ago, but now the daddy gets his ass whooped. As, and my man Ashtray is just bashing his head in with a shotgun. I'm like, yes, do it again. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Can't stop, won't stop. I was loving that moment, but the moment that was just so funny to me. Again, the comedic beats were just fantastic, is when we see Cal at this point lets it out that he, you know, everything that went down in season one with Jules and thinking that, you know, that Fez already knew the situation. Situation and that he has a tape and like Fez is just as confused as he is and Kyle is confused with the whole situation and what's at hand the confusion between those two was just so funny and regardless of how I felt about those 15 minutes the ice on the cake for the comedic beat of this week is when Faye hey who are you my name's Kyle do you and your boy like sleep with the same people that was the ice on the cake that was like yes this is the funniest episode of this show so far the comedic beats were absolutely fantastic but Fez and Kyle they come to an agreement they're gonna, they're gonna let Cal go as long as he um, tells his son to stay away from Rue stay away from Jules and more importantly stay the hell away from me for the rest of my life we all know Nate ain't gonna keep that promise especially that he has the control he ain't his daddy don't got the he ain't running things anymore it's Nate so I don't think that that promise will last long so we'll see what comes that and I don't think Cal's gonna forget that Ashtray was beating him over the head with a, with a shotgun so we'll see what comes to that plot moving forward but we have a very, very interesting moment. Jules and Elliot 
are again uh, together in the same scene, but uh, Rue is not around, so they are alone. Jules can't seem to trust Elliot, which she has every right to do so because he is keeping a lie from her. But he attempts to, he admits that he does have a crush on Rue, but he believes that Rue isn't a, you know, into him. And more importantly, he believes that she's asexual, which I think Rue is asexual in regards to her sexuality. But, you know, even Jules is like, yeah, she's not the most sexual person. But this is when Elliot kind of creeps in and makes his move. You know, they're having a bit of a flirty moment. He's giving her some compliments, saying she got the Kirk Cobain look. You know, she got the nice body, the the uh, you know the intellect, the the art pieces. He's really into her, and we see Jules like, oh, thank you, thank you. And you know, he's like, yo, but you already knew that because you know you're you're you know you love your life, Jules or, or Rue. She's probably told you all that. Nah, nah, bro. This is the first time she's hearing it. And I think Jules really liked hearing it because we never. Obviously, Rue loves the way she loves. She told her in, in her ways that how she loved Jules, but not in the way that Elliot did. So I'm asking you all now, is that love triangle becoming more of a shape? We got Rue and Jules and, and Jules and Elliot in the mix. Let me know what you all think about that relationship moving forward. But as we wrap up, we see Rue at her AA meeting with that briefcase, and Ali, my boy, um, back-to-back episodes. The more coma to me go, the more better for me, because he's such a great actor. But, you know, they get to talking about what's in a suitcase, and he's the kind of, you know, pushing her buttons, and Rue takes a shot at his parenting, and that was the moment when Ali, that pissed him clear off. But this is the first time I think Ali saw how low, how evil Rue can be, because she's like, what you gonna do, Ali? Hit me? I'm like, damn, this girl, this is that Rue. This is that... Uh, uh, you know, back to her old ways when she's on her her high horse, when she's high, when she's you know in her mood with drugs. This is when Rue's at her worst. So that was a great scene, small short scene, but it kind of shows Ali. I think this is the moment Ali needs to go ahead and tell Rue's mom that she's back on drugs because she's going down that dark path. But we'll see what he does with that. But when he came at her, I'm like, yes, someone speak to her because this girl's out her mind. But she came right back at him. But End of the episode, we end with Jules and Elliot smoking and talking still. Lexi's play is coming along just right, which I think the ultimate result of her play is is going to be recapping all the events of season one. Obviously, there's going to be some things that's missing out because she wasn't there for every single event in season one. But I think the play is going to be a moment where everyone's going to see their demons and everyone's going to see, you know, her perspective of the people. And I think Fez might actually go to the play and, and, and it might be some bad things she might have to say about Fez. I hope not because they, they're such a good couple. But also, is Ethan and Lexi maybe going to get closer as the season goes on? I don't know if that's something that the show is alluding to with him being a part of the play, but we'll see. I think this play is going to be a big moment. It might be like the season finale when it all comes together, but we see Cass is doing her routine on Fridays, meeting Nate and Rue's mom is, I don't know who she was talking to, which I tried to pause to see who is she on the phone with. I don't know if you all were able to get a good angle of that, but you know, she's like, oh, my daughter's doing good. No, she is not. She's selling drugs. She's doing heroin. She's not doing good. Uh, uh, but we see Rue doing the bad. She's taking the drugs that she promised to sell. Now, again, I don't know if this is just she's taking a, just a sample and she's going to ultimately sell it and do what she told Lori or she's going to just do all those drugs by herself or maybe get Elliot doing the drugs with her or they're going to sell them together. I don't know, but her in that suitcase is not a good thing. Let me know what you all think is going to come of that. But the big moment here, Cass gets the text from Nate that he's not going to be able to meet her tonight, and we see he has flowers. We cut to Maddie babysitting, and you know who's at the front door. It is Nate with those flowers. God damn it, Maddie. I thought you was going to be able to do it, but nope. We got another triangle now that's official between Nate we got Cass and we got, uh, you know, Maddie. So the drama continues, ladies and gentlemen. Again, I thought this was a great episode about the 17 minute mark and on. It was funny. It was some great emotional moments between Rue and her younger sister. And, you know, obviously this relationships that we got between Rue, Jules and Elliot between, you know, what we got with Nate, Maddie, and now, um, you know, Cass and the stuff that we continue to get with Lexi, you know, Kat going through her self identity crisis, new relationship, Lexi, Ethan in the future. And of course, Cal, will who be able to get his son to not tell, you know, um, you know, to not interfere with the other characters? And will Maddie inevitably give that tape away? I don't know. Let me know your thoughts on that. But again, 
How did you feel about that cow stuff? And do you think Derek will reappear in this season being someone's daddy or being the daddy of Nate and his brother? Let me know your thoughts on that. But again, thank you all for watching this review. Like I said, right now we're live talking about this episode with myself and my two special guests. And I can't wait to you all to see who that is. So make sure you're, you're hopping on that live stream and joining the discussion. But again, thank you for watching this review. Make sure if you haven't already to like, share, leave your thoughts in the comments. Again, subscribe to the channel. We are on the quest of 20,000 subscribers. I appreciate you all. Hope you're staying safe. We'll see you in a little bit on that live stream. Subscribe, check out my other content. Catch you in the next video.